Hi, this is group number 15 and we'll present to you today Spot Delusion, an online game. Let's imagine that we have a very powerful model which is capable of detecting where lesions are given a medical scan. How would you break the ice about this model to the general audience? It is easy to show them some statistics about what the model can do, but it is very hard to make them fully appreciate the model without going into many technical details. It is also very difficult to get the audience to appreciate this technology because it is very hard to actually imagine how this technology works, see what it does, and moreover, uh, deal with it in your day-to-day -day life. So the goal that we actually have with our project is to get the audience to engage with an AI for medical imaging and to actually appreciate what it is capable of doing. The way that our client found effective was to create a game, which is exactly our starting point. We have received from our client a very simple game skeleton, which was essentially containing the main game mechanics. Take a user and make it play against the model in detecting lesions, which is exactly what we have as our core mechanic as well. But this game was quite simple and required quite a lot of improvements before it became an actual engaging and attractive game for users. The best way to see where spot the lesion is now, since we are talking about the game, is to actually get to play. So let's get into that and see what the spot what spot the lesion is now. As you can see, if we try to directly jump into the game, we are prompted by a dialogue which suggests that we should take the tutorial first. We observe that some of our users are eager to jump directly into the game, although they are not familiar yet with the concepts of spotting lesions. Now, if we go into the tutorial, we can see that it explains the general concepts of the game, trying to keep it as simple as possible. We tried not to cluster the tutorial slides with too much information as to not overwhelm the user. We've also included a very short description of what a lesion is, as throughout the iterations, the biggest complaint we got from the users who tried our app was that they had no idea how a lesion looks like, so they had no actual reference when playing the game for the first time. Now that we are knowledgeable enough, let us try the game. We have separated the game into different game modes and difficulty levels, which is the most requested and appreciated feature as it allowed the users to experience the game differently. This is because we recognize quite early that there are players of vari various experience. Difficulties allow new users to enjoy making progress without struggling at first, as uh, easier difficulties have easier to spot lesions. In casual game mode, there is no time limit and you can play until you get bored, while in the competitive game mode, you have 10 seconds per round and you only play a fixed number of rounds. Now let us jump into the actual game. We will first play a casual game just to get a taste of what lesion spotting is. So this is the actual game. What we are presented with is a CT scan which supposedly contains a lesion somewhere. And as I'm not sure where the lesion could be, I wouldn't mind the hint. So if I press this uh, show hint button, the area in which I need to focus my attention gets a little smaller. Now I can assume that this is the uh, lesion that I'm looking for. So when I click on it, a cross appears on the spot and it is the AI's turn to make its pick. The red box is the AI's pick while the green box represents where the lesion is. I could also share my score on social media and another important feature is the image statistics, which aggregates the answers of all users for this specific CT scan. It registers the number of correct and wrong answers, as well as the number of hints used. We have also implemented a heat map in which um, we aggregate the positions of all clicks uh, for all users for this image, so that uh, two clicks in the same area combine into a bigger blob of greater heat intensity. This way, users can get a better idea of how they comp uh, compare to others. And this was uh, a feature that uh, users enjoyed uh, very much since it gave them an idea of how other users perceive the lesion location. Now let's submit our score into the leaderboard. After I click the submit button and I enter a username, then I submit my score and I'm redirected to the main menu page where I get a green snack bar that informs me that everything is fine and that my score has been uh, successfully uploaded. Now that we've had some practice, let's try a new challenge and start a competitive game. As you can see, the main difference is that now I'm restricted to 10 seconds per image and the hint appears after five seconds. After a set number of rounds, the game ends 
and we can submit our score in the same way as for the casual game mode. Also, now there is a new button, which allows me to challenge a friend with the same exact images that we played with. If we click the button, we generate a tiny URL, which we can then share with anyone. You might have noticed that during the game, sometimes a small snack bar would appear in the top right corner, telling us that we own an achievement. If we now go to the achievements page, we can actually see what we unlocked and what we did to unlock it. Clicking on an achievement will yield the description about the achievement or not unlocked for those that are yet to be unlocked. Some of the users mentioned that they feel like the game doesn't have an end goal or purpose. So now with the addition of achievements, we feel that we are trying to raise the curiosity and investments of the players. So now they would be more interested in learning how to correctly spot the lesions in order to unlock all the achievements. Moving on to the statistics section, we get some general information about how the humans compare to the AI in both the casual and competitive game modes and how many hints are used or not used. This is quite useful for players that do not want to actually play the game, but they are interested in the educational value. So they want to see how the AI is uh, performing compared to the humans. And then moving on to the leaderboards page, we see that we have quite a few of them. Firstly, based on the time, we have the current day, current month, and all time. And then based on the game mode, we have casual and competitive. A very interesting thing about this is that it, it gets updated in real time. So whenever someone submits a new score, as you can see here, it gets updated without having to refresh the page. What we created thus far is the beginning of an educational tool, and we hope to see people enjoy the game just as much as we enjoyed working on this project. Thank you, and we hope you will enjoy our game.